So now let's talk about leaky gut. How many of you have heard of leaky gut? Wow, I'm impressed, okay. So leaky gut is also known as abnormal intestinal permeability. So the lining of our GI tract is actually only one cell layer thick. And the cells that line your, your gut are called enterocytes. It was designed this way to make it easy for us to absorb nutrients from our gut. But the downside is that if your gut is traumatized by toxins, sugar, inflammatory foods, ibuprofen, antibiotics, or stress, there can be disruption in the tight junctions between the cells or the enterocytes, and that can cause impaired gut permeability, also known as leaky gut. Now, there is an objective way to diagnose this condition, and that's by measuring zonulin level in the stool. So zonulin will be elevated if there's any disruption in between the tight junctions between those enterocytes. So if zonulin is elevated, the patient has leaky gut. So leaky gut allows foods and other environmental toxins to readily enter the bloodstream and cause immune dysregulation. You know, we're constantly exposed to viruses and bacteria in the environment. So our gut is our first line of defense against all the incoming toxins. So the lining of our gut has tremendous immune cells. That's why they say your biggest immune system is in your gut. So dysregulation in the barrier of your gut can lead to systemic inflammation and autoimmune disease, such as Hashimoto's thyroid disease, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and inflammatory bowel disease, which is like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So let me give you a case example of leaky gut. So Sandra is a 40-year-old woman, about 15 pounds overweight. She's taking ibuprofen almost daily for her headaches. Her diet is the standard American diet, or the SAD diet. <laughs> so by this, I'm referring to fast foods, processed foods, sugary drinks. She has a lot of stress from her job and her long commute. She starts get noticing that she's getting pain in her joints after meals. And that she, when she has a cocktail, she notices she gets achiness in her joints within minutes. So Sandra's primary doctor sent her to a rheumatologist. So she's tested for rheumatoid arthritis, but it's negative. So her rheumatologist puts her on meloxicam to help manage her joint symptoms. So meloxicam is a pain medication in the NSAID family. So it's kind of in the ibuprofen family. And just like ibuprofen, it can be really harsh on the gut. So she starts using the meloxicam daily, which gives her temporary relief, but now she's feeling dependent on it every day for the pain. And she's not even really sure if this is addressing her underlying problem. Then Sandra comes to see me and we do a very comprehensive blood work. We find out that she has a positive TPO antibody and that's the thyroid peroxidase antibody consistent with Hashimoto's thyroid disease. So this is autoimmune thyroid disease. And the TPO antibody basically attacks the thyroid and causes inflammation in the thyroid. Her blood ESR, which is the SED rate, and CRP are elevated. So these are inflammation markers in her blood. I do her gut microbiome test and find that her zonulin is elevated. Remember, zonulin means there's disruption in the tight junctions between her gut cells, the enterocytes. So she has leaky gut. She also has another marker of inflammation in her stool called the fecal secretory IgA, which is high. So basically, Sandra is inflamed. Her main problem is inflammation. And basically, the inflammation that's causing the leaky gut and the disruption in the intestinal permeability is then causing her to have the systemic inflammation that's causing her joint pains and also causing the autoimmune thyroid disease. So the crazy thing is meloxicam reduces pain in the joints, but it can actually worsen the inflammation in the gut. So it leads to like a vicious cycle of inflammation in the body. So how do we treat Sandra? So first, you know, we clean up her diet. We have her avoid all refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and trans fat. We have her avoid all the ibuprofen and meloxicam. Then we give her a special amino acid called glutamine. Glutamine is healing to the enterocytes that line the gut. We also have her drink some bone broth because bone broth is naturally rich in glutamine, 
We give her probiotics to reboot and recolonize her microbiome. I give her B-complex vitamins to help with her sugar cravings. And then lastly, I give her fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids to help reduce inflammation. So for pain, if absolutely necessary, you know, I'll have her use Tylenol because Tylenol does not cause any inflammation in the gut. And then sometimes I also prescribe topical ketoprofen gel. So ketoprofen is like ibuprofen, but because it's topical, a patient can just apply it on the joint that's bothering them and they don't have to use something that's gonna affect their gut. So three months later, Sandra comes to see me and she's lost 10 pounds. She no longer feels inflamed. Her joint pain is gone. Her headaches are gone. And her TPO antibody for her Hashimoto's thyroid disease is down 50%. And then her sed rate and CRP, the inflammation markers in her blood, are, have normalized. So this is a good example showing how treating gut inflammation and leaky gut can help reduce inflammation in your whole body and lead to better regulation of the immune system in autoimmune disease. <music>